Here is a seven. Remember that. It's important. Why? Here is a clue. pH. We measure the strength of acids and bases by their pH value. If we look down there to low pH, we're looking at the acids. And if we look up there to high pHs, we see the bases. Which is a pretty annoying name for something that's high up on the scale, but there you go. They're the bases. Our title is Acids, Bases and Salts. So what is a salt? To find out, we have to investigate acids and bases. So we know that 7 is the key pH. Below this we have acids, above we have alkalis, but what else can we say about them? Acids turn blue litmus paper red. Strong acids turn universal indicator red too. And weak ones turn it orange or yellow. What can we say about bases? What are bases anyway? They're usually metal oxides or metal hydroxides. When a base can dissolve in water, it is also called an alkali. Just like bases, the stronger the alkali, the higher the pH value. Right up to pH 14 for the strongest. They turn red litmus paper blue. They turn universal indicator blue or purple if they're strong, and blue-green if they're weak. Sitting on our magic line at pH 7 are neutral chemicals. They are not acids and they are not bases. They don't change the colour of litmus paper, but they do turn universal indicator green. Water, for example, is neutral, so is paraffin. In the exam, you need to know about the reactions acids have with bases, carbonates and reactive metals. In all three of these types of reaction, a salt is formed and you need to be able to work out which salt this is. Yes, in chemistry there are many different compounds called salts. One of them is indeed sodium chloride, the kind you put on your chips. But more generally, a salt is created when an acid reacts with a base, carbonate or metal, and it's not a good idea to eat them. Let's have a look at each of these in turn. First up are acids and bases. Bases, remember, are typically metal oxides and metal hydroxides. The reaction between an acid and a base is called neutralisation. It produces a salt and water. Next up are acids and carbonates. Forgotten what a carbonate is? Think chalk, limestone and marble. Remember now? <laughs> Thought so. OK, so what do we get when an acid combines with a carbonate? We get a salt, water and, you guessed it, carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide causes bubbling during the reaction. Lime water turns cloudy white when carbon dioxide is bubbled through it. Last up are acids and reactive metals. In this reaction, a salt is formed and... Hydrogen gas. No water. Remember the test for hydrogen. Thank you. Unfortunately, it's not enough to know that a salt is formed in the reactions we've described because, quite honestly, a salt is formed for each one. You also need to know the name of the salt. A salt name has two parts. Part 1. A metal name from the base or the metal itself. Part 2. A name from the acid that was used. Let's look at an example. Sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid react together and make sodium chloride. Sodium is the metal in the base and the chloride comes from the name of the acid. It's like double-barreled surnames. You credit both halves of the creative process. Sulfuric acid makes sulfates and nitric acid makes nitrates. You can see where they get the names. If you're making a salt from an alkaline solution, formed when a base dissolves in water, remember, you can be very precise. Start with the alkali. Add the acid very slowly and use universal indicator to tell when you reach a neutral pH. The indicator goes green. That means all the alkali has reacted with the acid. And all you have now is salt and water. Now evaporate the water. The salt crystals left behind will be larger if you do this slowly. Now, what if your base isn't an alkali? Copper oxide, for example. It and the other transition metal oxides and hydroxides don't dissolve in water. Keep adding until no more will dissolve and some is left over. 
We call this the excess. No more will react because all the acid has been used up. Now filter the mixture to remove the excess base. Now all you have is salt and water again. Evaporate the water to leave the salt behind.